school. <sighs> Ralph the Viking here. So, I actually had a question in an older video where I've been talking about the spoon auger. And John Dow commented, or John Doe, I'm not sure. Um, well, they wanted to see more. They asked how it compared to a modern auger, how long it takes, so about that long. A, what we went through was a piece of wood that we're making a, boring a hole all the way through. As far as I could, obviously they would have done that in shipbuilding and whatnot. Um, I think best practice would have been to use this against something solid. Because as it is, I'm going to have to clean up the other side with a knife, which I'll just go through and clean it up. If we were against something solid, you could bore through a little easier. Um, beyond that, it works well. You saw how long it takes. Um, John Dow, I don't know how long it com or how it compares to modern augers. My first knee-jerk asshole reaction was, well, a modern auger's a cordless drill, and that's a lot quicker. But I'm assuming he meant like a Scotchite auger. I don't actually own a Scotchite auger. I've used larger augers or similar size of the spirally drilly bit variety. This. I'd say it's about the same length of time. The advantage to those augers, especially the modern ones that have the, the screw end uh, that taps right in, it won't wobble as much. To do this, what I didn't show is, I figured out where I wanted my hole, I took my knife, I scored around a bit to kind of start a pilot, and then the tip of this will sit in there and not move. Um, you may have seen when I was drilling, I changed direction a couple times. As you're going, sometimes because of the shape of this, which might be another advantage of the other style, you end up with a bit of a shelf when you're making your hole, where you're scraping, because this scrapes material. A Scotchite auger in the drill bit style or the corkscrew style, however you want to call it, will also scrape, but it scrapes and pulls material out. This keeps material in there and you're just scraping against. It takes a little more work. If you go the other direction a couple times, you start going the other way and you'll wear down the shelf you've made. You'll wear it down a little bit and then you can keep going. Yet the nice thing about these, these are non-directional. If you have more if you're more comfortable going left or right, you can just go that direction. This will cut in both directions. By sound I can hear this one seems to like to scrape and work better when I go to the left. Going to the right works. Going to the left, you can hear it. When you go right, it's... I don't know if you can actually hear any of that if the microphone's picking it up. but That's just this particular... Again, when you're dealing with handmade tools, you got to kind of figure out how they want to work. But that's, this is non-directional. You can go either way. With a Scotch-Eyed Auger, it's righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Right? You gotta go right. I don't know if, how that might affect anyone, if anyone ever prefers to go left, because for a million years it's been righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. But that's one difference. The, the time's not too different. If you're boring a hole into to a solid piece into the end of something, and you're not going all the way through, uh, you're going to have to stop and clear your, your project a, a more because you're just going to get buildup in there. When going through and working at the angle I was at, I hit a, a point where it kind of fill up and then start coming out. That's what I've noticed working on my workspace over there. Which, by the way, is a shave horse made by Tim the Enchanter. Thank you very much, Tim. An old friend of mine made it for me. Actually, he made it, and then it was he didn't want it, so he gave it to me. Um, he just likes making things, but thank you very much, Tim. So I was using the back of that. It's 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 kind of like when I use my power drill as a hammer. I abuse all tools and use them for things they're not meant for. So I'm using that as my my workspace. So that's an interesting point with these. You you need to be on something, and you want to be up a little higher. So if you got a workbench, something to work on, Scotchite auger, you tend to you want to be kind of straight down. They got the handle and you turn. 
with this because of the way it works you can go straight down and I have um, maybe it's just because my back's not great I like to be up a little higher with anything I do um, another thing you may have noticed between the last time I've talked about this and now I wrapped the butt with fur I had some fur scraps I used this a bunch a while back and I have an imprint in my chest still from my Thor's hammer, my Mjolnir that I wear because it was resting on there and I kept having to throw this over my shoulder and then it would come down. So this time I took this right off and wrapped this in fur. I believe it's fox or coyote underneath and then I'm not too sure what this white one is. Um, it's very soft. It also looks like a, a weird Davy Crockett puppet. Hey buddy, is this video interesting? Da, 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 da. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that helps a lot. It's like natural padding. Is it period? I would assume so. I think at some point. Or they were just big manly Vikings and didn't worry about it. Although, you know, big manly Vikings have big strong chests with muscles and mine's pretty flabby and soft. So you'd think I'd have the advantage on that one. But. So I hope that answers the question as far as how it compares to a modern auger. If I didn't quite hit it comment again i'll make another video as always comment on these things um I'll, I'll make a whole video on it and try to explain it uh through my other video i think i've explained the, the quite well this versus a a scotchite auger as far as the, the whole contraption and why i love it um one interesting thing about this that i like is that you can knock the bit out and put a new one in with scotchite augers they are what they are you have to carry them all um, and you have to make a handle for them all and kind of when you put one in there it is you don't want to take it out break them down put it in every time you use it you could pop the stick out and put it in a different one but that's the other thing each size scotch eye auger usually has a different size eye so this you need one handle in your bits one of those you need a handle for each one a little more burdensome to carry if you're actually doing projects if you just buy one scotch night auger of the one size you think you're going to need or make everything that's fine these again i believe i've mentioned it's been a while since I've, i i don't watch my own videos i don't even know what i said um we're doing various projects with this this is kind of like our, our our drill set so we have our different sizes for different projects and different things and i had them made to the fines from the master mirror chest and the sizes We'll make more videos and, and do the uh, bigger sizes and see how that works. I'm still reluctant to try it on this because the maker of this, of course, Bjorn the back Blacksmith made this, um, recommended not using this handle with the big, I want to say, 5 millimeter. I don't know what that converts to in American. I don't know. Um, so that we're going to probably make another handle for. But we'll, we'll do some more and play with some more and experiment. But that's how long it takes. Uh, I like using this a lot. One thing I'll say, uh, I, I feel this is important enough worth mentioning. The first hole I made with this felt like it took forever. And I was immediately like, I hate this. This is taking forever. Why am I doing this? The second hole did it. So it's like anything. If you don't see the progress right away, and this is literally like gains in, in you know, small increments but then doing this felt like nothing after you do the first one you blow through everything i love it very good craftsmanship um the my and the, here's the other thing my tip is bent on this i'm not disparaging bjorn's work um it was probably my fault when i put it in although i i did put it in based on the directions um but my tip's a little bent and you still saw how well it worked it doesn't walk on the project it's still right where I wanted it to be. It would probably work faster if I didn't have bent the tip. Uh, again, I'm not disparaging the work. When you make five million things, uh, one of them might have a flaw in it, okay? I'm sure all the other bits are fine, and again, I might have pounded it too hard. It's probably my fault. But even with the tip bent in essentially the wrong direction, and it's only slight, but it's, it's enough that it should affect the project, but it doesn't seem to affect it enough. So again, it's probably quicker uh, with a straighter bit. Have I left anything out? I think I've hit all the points. I'm trying to remember. 
you know, I don't run on notes. I don't script any of this out, and I don't remember exactly what John Dow asked or Doe. Is it Doe? Da? Dow? I'm asking you like you're going to answer me. Um, also, I, I hope this video finds you. I don't know if you've subscribed, and it's if, we're small, and YouTube doesn't push things out. But I hope you, this answers your question, and, and you find this video. Uh, if you want to see me do anything else with this, uh, just let me know and I'll do it. And we'll have a conversation through awkward videos. So, I think that about covers it. Chieftain out. Ah!